Hi. I have been reviewing the Watchtower's coverage of the Book of Acts from the book Bearing Thorough Witness. And right now I'm dealing with uh, chapter 6 of Acts, verses 1 to 6. If we were to read the description that is given or supplied by the Watchtower in paragraph 17, here's a question for you. Would one get the same impression of the early church in Jerusalem as you would from reading the actual text in the book of Acts, especially the references they make in chapters 2 and 4? So I'm going to read you first of all the paragraph, what their paragraph says, and then we'll read text from scripture, specifically the ones they reference. The young congregation now faced a subtle danger that threatened it from within. What was that? Many of the disciples being baptized were visitors to Jerusalem and wanted to learn more before returning home. Disciples living in Jerusalem willingly donated funds to meet the need for food and other supplies. And then they reference Acts chapter 2, verses 44 to 46, and Acts chapter 4, verses 34 to 37. And then they continue, At this time a delicate situation arose. In the daily distribution, that part being a quote from scripture, in the daily distribution of food, the Greek-speaking widows, and then again part of the quote, were being overlooked. And they reference Acts 6, verse 1. The Hebrew-speaking widows, however, were not being overlooked. The problem then apparently involved discrimination. Few issues have potential to be more divisive than this one. Okay, so now just uh, we'll look at the, the scriptures that they reference. We'll read a little more than what they actually give you. They mentioned Acts chapter 2, verses 44 to 46, but we'll read from 40 right to the end of, to 47. This is what it says. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. So this is the tail end of Peter's speech in Jerusalem that converted so many people. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as any one had need. So, continuing daily, with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So uh, in, in the reading of this, do you see anything about uh, them being visitors to Jerusalem that they were taking care of? Or is it that the early church in Jerusalem became like this, having things in common? So they weren't just supplying for needs of some visitors. That's the impression I got from the paragraph in the Watchtower's material. Uh, and then, uh, so, so you have to ask, what was the character of the Jerusalem church? I think this is describing the general character 
of the early church, what they were like. Not just uh, taking care of visitors like to a district assembly. You know, that's kind of the impression I got from the way they worded it. Okay, next we will read Acts chapter 4, verses, they say 34 to 37, but we're going to read 32 to 37. Acts 4. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. This was the part that they didn't ask us to read. So I think it's noteworthy that it's the apostles that are giving the witness or preaching the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. They're the only ones that are talked about doing this to a multitude of people. Now we continue, 34 to 37. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of lands and of houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each one as any one had need. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Okay, so uh, I would say you're again seeing the character of the church, that they were generous and that they were considering what they had as belonging to all of them as believers. Now this kind of uh, characteristic, I would say, is what should be the goal of people, to live that way, to view your stuff as 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 belonging not to you personally but to to uh, to the blessings of others say that way I would say in modern life though this characteristic is more difficult for the church uh, because modern life in cities is different than it was in the time of the first century where people knew each other and knew the the society that right around them it was uh, smaller than, than the city life that we have. So in modern society, it would be easier to abuse this, to, for it to be abused by people. Uh, so I, I would say maybe that's one of the reasons we don't see as much generosity in society, church society even, as we would like. But most churches do have some kind of a benevolent fund or they participate in activities of, uh, that are, are um, definitely uh, outreaches to people who are needy or poor. But when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I would never have thought if I was in trouble and uh, needed money to go to the watchtower and ask them to help me or food even there was there were some things that was just in your mind that you're supposed to take care of that yourself so why wouldn't we have thought that we could readily get help from the organization it just was not presented as the normal process of things how you would do or what you should expect. I even recall a conversation with a pioneer partner of mine. She was a sister who was a single mom and had six kids that she was trying to take care of. By this point when I'm talking to her she was remarried and she was doing all right but she said during the, the period when she was a, a single mom with no uh, no husband to provide for her at that point, she said that they were living on buttered noodles. 
she was already involved in the congregation and active as a witness. And yet she was living that way. Why did she not feel inclined to ask for help or to even let people in the congregation know about this? At least I didn't know about it. So I would ask, why wasn't it something that was done by the congregation to be aware of these things and to be helping people and to be encouraging people to ask for help of that kind? I only recall coordinated help for natural disasters. Then uh, witnesses would organize something, but it certainly wasn't something that was done for the daily needs of the needy, for widows and orphans. So I'm going to link to two videos. One is called Seven Characteristics of Christ Church in Acts 2. Do Jehovah's Witnesses measure up? And the second video is Christ says perfect faith is caring for poor. Were we taught this as Jehovah's Witnesses? <laughs> 